Hey everyone, uh, Frank here from the Netherlands. Uh, good to see you all. Um, I had the honor last year to be the winner of the first global world championship ever, 2020. And the organization asked me to share a bit with you about um, what happened to me after I've won this competition. Uh, if, uh, if some doors got opened or if I had any experiences. So I would like to, to share with you some things from my life. Um, first of all, I was really um, honored last year uh, to share the stage with all these amazing contestants, uh, whistlers from all around the world. And I was honored even more by being awarded the first prize. So uh, that was already amazing for me. And then a lot of cool things happened this year. And one of my personal favorites was that I got invited by the queen and the king of the Netherlands. Uh, in the palace in The Hague. So I went there with my uh, broken car uh, who was hanging together <laughs> with duct tape uh, and I was uh, admitted to the, the parking lot of the palace by uh, a lot of soldiers who were saluting me officially when I drove by like I was the king, <laughs> the king and not only the 2020 king of whistling. So I went there and it was just like in the fairy tales with servants walking around with silver dishes with the best food you can imagine. And I got seated uh, almost next to the king at a small table and we had, had lunch there and it was, was a really amazing experience. And um, a story that I got to tell in the class of uh, my children to my daughter, oldest daughter is eight years old. So these uh, children were looking at me like I was some kind of a hero from a fairy tale myself. And another cool thing uh, for me personal highlight was that I uh, got to perform together with my whistling hero Geert Chatru. Uh, we whistled uh, a duet and uh, I've been known, I, I know, I've known Geert already for quite a long time. It was the first time that we performed together. Uh, I didn't perform so much this year. This was not only because of uh, Corona, the pandemic, but also because it was not really my ambition to, to be a professional whistler. Uh, so I got invited by the media a lot. I, I was invited to every talk show to, uh, to participate in, in radio shows and do interviews in newspapers. And I did a lot of these things, but at some point I just stopped doing it because I participated in the competition merely for the pure joy of it and not really because I wanted to perform a lot and whistle a lot. Uh, so, but it got me thinking because I'm actually a professional pianist and I noticed how the media um, really jumped into this news. You know, I, as a pianist and concert organizer, I've been trying to put my name out there a lot of times. And it's really hard to get uh, to get through this wall uh, where you're competing with thousands of other musicians who are just doing almost the same thing as you are doing. So with whistling, it's much different because it's quite unique. There are not so many people who are doing it. If I'm talking about this subject, a lot of people don't even know what it is and that it exists. So if um, my piece of advice for the winner of this year is that if you want to perform a lot and uh, to get a career out of this, well, I think you probably can. So uh, you should leverage the fact that the media just like this kind of news so much by after, uh, after winning this competition, I suggest that you just send out a press release to, um, to the media, to the newspapers, to to talk shows, uh, perhaps even internationally, uh, just like Geert Chatru, uh, the former world champion, uh, did some years ago. After he won, a friend of his sent out press releases to, to the media and a few months later he was able to quit his job and become a full-time whistler. So uh, that's my advice for you. Uh, in the meantime, I'm very curious who's going to win this year. I have my personal suspicions, um, but let's see and find out. Uh, until then, have a good day and cheers to the winner.